Well, hello there, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Paul the Guzman Presents Art. So today is kind of a special day. It's special because I'm doing something a bit different with my channel, and um, there's a few reasons for that. But before we go there, I just want to say thank you to some subscribers who recently subscribed to the channel. Um, I really am appreciative of all the engagement and all the um, people who tune in and then they s decide to subscribe to the channel. That's really great. Considering the fact that contemporary art doesn't really have a very big audience, so every small sort of like little tick up that subscriber collection, and there's a, that subscriber list is really significant for me. So because it's like fledgling channel has been on for about six months so anybody who joins in is really terrific and I welcome you to the engagement of contemporary art. And I'm saying that it's a bit special today because we are, I'm filming this in my home and um, what we're trying to do is I'm trying to do a little bit of a new feature called, what was it called? I think it's called From My Collection or From The Collection. And you'll also notice that there's probably some music playing in the background and that music is kind of specific and catered to the topic that we're going to discuss today because what I want to do is I want to go through my collection and try and focus on one artist that I have in my collection. You know when you've been collecting for a while, you notice that there's certain patterns in what you're doing so it's great to sort of like just acknowledge that and try and sort of think about what made you go and look at the artist's work and what made that sort of like engagement sustained over a period of time. And today we're going to go and look at the work of legendary jazz musician and outsider visual artist Al Neal. And so, but before we go there, I just wanted to acknowledge that we are on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil Waututh nations, also known as the city of Vancouver. So I'm gonna go and have a. I'm gonna go and take this. Um, take my gimbal and I'm gonna go and just pan through one of the pieces. And this is one of the pieces by Al Neal. Al Neal is um, apart from being well-known in Vancouver as a jazz musician. He's also well-known as a collage artist and also assemblage artist. And he, because he's a jazz musician, I thought I'd just play some jazz music in the background. And that music is actually, I'm just going to show you. It's called, it's from the Jazz Classics Collection, um, Cannonball Adderley. So hopefully you can hear that because I'm, I can't really hear it right now because I have earplugs. But the earplugs allow me to concentrate. So a bit more about Al Neal. Al Neal was born 1924 and he passed away in 2017. During that time, he established a jazz club called The Cellar in Vancouver, Canada, around, I think it was 1956 that he did that. And he is well known as a musician, but during all that time, he's also been doing a lot of work, visual artwork, in the realm of collages, because he's also influenced by, let's see, apart from experimental music and jazz, he is influenced by a lot of writing, mostly poetry, French and American poetry, as well as Surrealism and Dada. Actually, what we're looking at right now, like right here, is a handwritten, handwritten quote from one of Charles Olson's poems. I believe he's a poet. And um, the one thing that he likes to do is to actually, I think he's right-handed. So what he would do is he would, he would take his other hand and he would try and write with that other hand so that it actually has a certain unpredictability in terms of his script. 
So when you're looking at something like this, it almost looks like it's like um, from a elementary school script. It's because he's using his other hand to write a quote from the Charles Olson poem. I once met him when this piece was being exhibited and I asked him about the Charles Olson quote and the one thing he told me was uh, you really want to know because it's really depressing because it deals with tombs and skeletons and um, corpses and um, so there's a certain sort of like darkness about it and I think the darkness tends to come from his experience of World War II when he actually he was 20 years old when he joined the war. No, he was actually a teenager and then he got out of the war and, and when he was 20 and that kind of scarred him for, for the rest of his life. And because of that, he turned to alcohol and drugs. But still, you know, a lifetime of drugs and alcohol, he was warned by his doctor to sort of like, if you don't stop this, you're not going to last six months. The irony about it is that he... Al Neal lived till 93 years old and a lot of the doctors who told him that pretty much passed away before he did so <laughs> it's kind of like an interesting legacy that he has so this particular one I'm not sure it's, it, I think it's left untitled but I just wanted to show you this piece with that Charles Olson's quote there's a lot of bits of ephemera in the work very dada very surreal and a lot of, I guess, tachiste marks that are, those are those black ink marks that are on the piece. Like, for example, this piece over there. And this is on top of, like, some glassine. These are types of the mark makings that I really quite like about this body of work because I'm a methodical artist. And, and I'm always in admiration of people who can actually just go and take something and just make a composition out of it. And because he's a musician, a jazz musician, you know, I think a lot of the works, when I see them, they have this sort of compositional quality to them. So I'm just gonna put this down for a little while, and then we're gonna go and see another piece by him. Just give me a moment, and we'll go and have a look at another piece that actually has a title. And this piece is called The Mask of God. I'm just going to put that there. Let me just pick it up now. So this, uh, this second piece is... The, uh, the dimensions of this piece is actually not a very big piece. It's only about 12 inches by... No, it's 8.5 by 11. It's a letter size paper. Letter size, North American size. And... They're just acid-free papers, and when this piece was exhibited, it was a particular exhibition of drawings by Al Neal, done around the mid to late 80s, I believe. It was exhibited at a gallery called Atelier Gallery in Vancouver. And one thing that I just recently noticed about the work that he does is that he does a lot of portraits. And a lot of them have titles that tend to sort of reference um, the struggles that he's gone through. Apart from being a musician and an artist, he's also a writer. And one of the um, books that I have of his is this book called Al Neal Origins. But he's published uh, another couple, maybe three more of these books. And they're autobiographical and discusses his entire lifelong interest in experimental jazz, music, surrealism, and Dada. I'm going to put this down now. And we're going to go and have a look at another piece. And this one is also another self-portrait. And it's titled Sad Old Man. This one is a bit more, I would say, haphazard, abstracted, not really... This is more expressionist, I would think, than 
because a piece of paper, they're all pretty much drawings. You know, there's no additional elements of ephemera that are added to these. And that's what I enjoy about these works is that they're always these sort of momentary expressions on paper. And I think when he signs his name, he uses his left hand. Uh, he uses the wrong hand to sort of like just affect a certain sort of like, I guess, just to affect some sort of like um, unpredictability to it. And there's also another piece that I wanted to show which uh, is not framed, so that's quite a treat because sometimes when you're showing, sometimes when you're showing things that are framed, it's really hard to sort of like see a lot of the detail, but this one in particular is quite beautiful. So, So this particular piece is part of an exquisite corpse. <clears throat> and for those of you who are not familiar of, an, of uh, what an exquisite corpse is, I'm just going to explain that it's a surrealist game. And the game is comprised of three pieces of paper that's folded into three. So the first person will try and do something that references the head and then it's folded over and the second person is supposed to do the body and the third person will do the lower part from the waist down. So whenever an artist is actually doing an, an exquisite corpse, they don't, they, they're not privy to seeing what the other person did. And then when it's all complete, the entire composition is revealed. So for this particular one, this is what Al Neil did. And we're just gonna go and unfold it. And, oops. and the second part, which is also an equally beautiful piece, is by his partner, Carol Itter. Now, Carol Itter is also a very prominent Vancouver-based artist. And this particular piece is a very, very important, poignant piece because it deals with a lot of issues referring, referring to depression and suicide and feminist and women's issues because um, Carol Itter's had some losses in her life uh, loss of a child for in, in particular so this was actually during that period of time that she was mourning and the last part of this exquisite corpse is by a friend of theirs and his name is Luke Blackstone so Luke is well known as well in Vancouver for his kinetic sculptures and uh, motorized some of them are motorized I think but, um, so these pieces, like when you look at that train track, that's an actual train track uh, from, from like um, one of those model trains. And then those with brown things, they're actually, um, they're actually from like, um, I guess a model train set. So this entire thing, this entire exquisite corpse was part of a fundraiser many years ago in the 1990s and I was there <laughs> and so they had exhibited this around 1992 I think and I saw this piece and I thought okay I better go and get this I was in a bidding war for this because there was a member of the Vancouver Art Gallery who was my main rival in terms of bidding on this piece and she was moving out of town and wanted to have a remembrance of her stay here in Vancouver. But I said, nope, I'm not going to take any prisoners. So, I'm going to go and end on that. Just going to go focus on this. 
it's really quite beautiful when you look at it up close. All of the um, mark making that's been done and all of the uh, found materials, the newspapers, it's all very, very beautifully done. So if you lasted this long, obviously you liked the video. So please feel free to click the thumbs up button. Also, if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing to the channel, it's free and it will make one content maker very happy. And like I said, you know, we don't really have a lot of people interested in contemporary art. And so every little bit counts. It gives me motivation to sort of go and have a look at other topics that I can share with you. And like I said, this is a, this is a new format for me and I might do more formats at a future date. Let me know if you enjoy this video. Put some comments and some suggestions in the description area. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for viewing my videos. Have a great day and I am out of here. Bye.